Pacific Drive. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. Face the supernatural dangers of the Olympic exclusion zone with a car as your only lifeline in this driving survival adventure. Scavenge resources, load up your trusty station wagon and drive like hell to make it through alive. Guys, this is a car survival game. You have a station wagon. It's uh, straight out of National Lampoon's vacation. It's pretty similar to that one. And you are heading into the anomaly world. You're heading on these excursions to see what the hell's happened in this huge exclusion zone. Try and work it all out with little bits and bobs that you'll pick up and read and listen to. But most importantly, you're there to scavenge as much shit as possible to upgrade your car, repair it, and do the various quests that you're given. My rig hits the recommended specs for this game, um, and it still is stretching it a little bit to the limit. It It, it is quite a... If you don't have a minimum of a, a 2080, you're gonna you're gonna struggle like uh, on this. You can turn things down. There's there's options in there. There's options to change pretty much everything about the game as well. Um, if the game is too brutal, which it quite is on the default settings, you can twiddle it so that you don't lose loot, for example, when you die or fail a mission, and all kinds of stuff that you can just make it pretty much the way you want it, except for one thing, and it's a huge thing. I know why they've done it, but I still disagree with it. You cannot save while you're on a mission. You just can't. And some of these missions, well, I've been on a mission over an hour before. So that's a problem because if something happens IRL, uh, you're f***ed. You've got to just leave it and uh, switch it off and you'll lose all your progress and you will have to do that again. And some of these missions, um, it's constant work that you're doing on the missions, you know, trying to avoid things. Uh, trying to break into things, crafting things on the fly to get through certain puzzles. And to do it all again would be a pain in the ass. Uh, I I honestly think it should have a save. Just one, if, if to have it like that, you know. Just one save in the in the anomaly zone. So if you do have to go out, if something happens, uh, you don't lose all your progress. Now this is a, a first impressions review. I'm doing so many games at the minute. I haven't got time to put any more hours into this. Um, but it's so immersive. It's so much fun. It's it's very stressful. Um, it's not like one of those, you know, nice, relaxing car drives in the country. <laughs> it's anything but. You have this base. It's a garage. I wish, they would, I wish they would allow you to shut the garage door, though, for that extra bit of coziness and immersion. But you can't. But anyway, you've got this garage that you get pretty much in, at, at the beginning of the game. And it's your repair workshop. This is where you repair your car, fill it up with fuel, fabricate different panels and bumpers for the car, craft all kinds of gizmos and gadgets, store all your stuff. When you come back from a mission, you'll uh, open the boot, get all the shit out, or trunk if it's a, a, you Americans, take all the shit out that you've collected on a mission, store it away, and then you can craft shit with it. There's a proper diagnostic tool for your car as well. When your car's um, a bit possessed, I'll come to that in a minute. There's also a checklist of things that you need to do to get your car roadworthy again before you go out on missions, fixing tires. I mean, this is, it's quite a little simulation, really. Uh, you have to pay attention to everything, fix headlamps, and you're crafting shit uh, for your car. Like I crafted a headlamp from just scrap metal and stuff like that, and, and they kind of look, you end up like, like a bit of a Mad Max looking kind of thing going on with your car. And then when you're happy with the car, you've You've got some essential supplies, like crafting tools that you might need to break into things. You then decide where you're going to go. And it's a bit like Back to the Future, the way you, you set off. You go through this um, little device that kind of teleports your car where it's going to go to. And you can't get back without uh, recharging that, the flux capacitor, if you like, to, to get back. And you find these when you get to the zones the, the, uh, on your little map. There'll be a bright orange ball. You get one of them and that gets you home. When you get to the place that you've chose to, and um, some of the places you have to go to will require two or three jumps, if you like, to get there, which means your car's taking damage all the time. And when you get to the place you want to be, your car might be in a shit state. That's why you have a, a little crafting bay in the boot of your car so you can fix things on the way. Um, I mean, it is a bit stupid, so the way you fix things, you, you fix a puncher by firing this splatty gel at it that just fixes it. Uh, same with repairing panels on your car. You have like a, a repair tool that just mixes this paste and splashes it on and fixes it. 
it's all a bit silly, but it's the attention to detail and the fact that you do actually have to take the time to do that is what makes this game so good because you have a lot to think about. Even driving the car, it's not just like, lol, get in the car and go. You have to turn the key, put it into drive, and then off you go. Shut the doors, of course. You've got to put your lights on manually, your wipers on. You've got to keep an eye on your battery level as well. You might need to get a jump at some point while you're out. You have to recharge that before you go. And you've also got fuel and a fuel gauge. You can scavenge fuel by siphoning it out of wrecks. You might find a, an old fuel truck with some fuel in as well, or even a gas station. All of these things have to be taken uh, into account. And then there's the anomalies themselves as you're driving around. All manner of shit happens. Some of it even affects the way your car behaves. Um, you'll be driving along and all of a sudden the bonnet will just flip up and you can't see a damn thing. And it's like the car has a bit of a mind of its own. The radio will suddenly turn on and all of these creepy things. And that's why I was saying earlier about uh, the diagnostics tool. You can fix this but when you get back um, and cleanse the car because it's a bit of a like a bit of a christine uh, on some of the missions by the time it gets back it's like possessed with all this shit going on with it and there's a whole load of other things out there that you need to worry about as well you've got crash test dummies around the place that can suddenly come alive and explode next to your car i hate them i hate them they just scare the shit out of me uh weeping angels and all that that's what kind of triggers in my head it, it's so stressful you've got these things that they're made up of like traffic lights um, they're just like little tiny UFOs and they're all nice and peaceful and green and then all of a sudden they change red throw an electromagnet on you can't drag it out into the woods like something from the evil f***ing dead it goes from ah to uh, like instantly this game it's just f***ing it's, it's, it's hilarious and scary at the same time but all the time you're kind of stressed out your car's taking damage you're taking damage you've got first aid kits for yourself and like i say you've got all manner of repair things for your actual car you'll come across houses you break into them you'll come across laboratories you break into them get as much stuff scavenging 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 get everything you can get while you're in this zone before you have to kind of get out of it doing the the, the missions as well uh, there'll be sometimes a few th different things you have to do when you're in a zone to complete a mission and then when the mission's done you go back and it's a great feeling when you've been out for like an hour or so into one of these zones and you've scavenged shit loads of stuff you've had loads of narrow escapes and then you charge up that portal to come home you drive through the portal and then you just like appear bam just like in back to the future right outside the garage the door opens you drive in and it's like oh i'm safe i've got a shit ton of loot in the boot let's get fabricating crafting repairing and all of that and then you hear the voice telling you uh, you have these people on the like the radio thing that tell you where you're going to go next. You're, you're just known as the driver. You're doing what they tell you, essentially. And uh, they'll give you your next coordinates, your next mission. Uh, you have a look at where you can go on the map. You can go anywhere you want um, and just go out. And it, it, The only thing is it, it, it can get a little bit... I can see this getting quite repetitive, but it's the, the immersion factors off the scale, guys. It really, really is good. It's, uh, it's scary. It's very, very tense. Very, very immersive. I mean, one of the things that gets me, and I love it, absolutely love it, is you're outside your car, and then you think everything's fine. Oh, I'm just going to go and switch the car off to save petrol, put the the brake on, put it into the uh, park, get out the car, and I'm going to go and um, have a look at this uh, wrecked car at the side of the road and see if I can scavenge anything. And then you just notice there's s some things heading towards you in the right there, and you have to get out of there. And it's like them the movies where you see them fumbling with the keys you, you get in the car you, I've, I've made all kinds of fumbling mistakes because i've been in blind panic trying i've got to start the car then you've got to put it in the drive then you've got to pull away all these things you've got to do before you can get away and these things are coming closer to you it's so immersive and scary and brilliant the way they've actually done it so it's a great game definitely worth picking up i hear it's about 20 uh, hours long uh, and it's, it costs about 22 quid. You can get this on Green Man Gaming. Click the link in the description. You'll get a... I'll, I'll tell, you, tell you how much the discount is. 10% off at the minute on, on Green Man Gaming. So there you go, guys. That specific drive, definitely worth a buy.